Hi, I'm Tom Neckfill, and I'm going to show you the best way to put on a new set of strings. I use a set uh, of GHS. Uh, the gauges are 10, uh, 10 on the first string, 12 thousandths on the second string, 14 thousandths on the third string, and uh, a wound 22 stainless steel on the fourth string. A lot of times I, uh, I serve strings up in and in rolled in a, into a set like this, and you can just unwind them. This is my second string, and these are my first strings. Now I'm going to change one string at a time and keep the bridge right in its own place there. And if you're really tearing down the instrument and you want to take all the strings off, no problem. Uh, you can do that uh, as well. Then we'll have to reset the bridge in the right place. But uh, I'm going to start out with one of the middle strings. Usually if you're starting with with no strings on the banjo, it's a good idea to put uh, a center string on first, like say maybe the third string. Uh, in this case, I've got the second string in my hand, so I will, I will set down the, the first ones. Okay, this is the most uh, important part of the operation, to make it easy for the string to stay in place on a neck filled banjo, especially we want to make sure that the loop goes on to the to the peg and I'm going to use my fingernail or something to hold the string on the end of the tailpiece. Now hopefully we can zoom in on this and see what I'm doing. If I don't if I don't bend the string around that little knob the string will fall off. So we do have to create a bend in the wire right at that point See, I hope you could see that. Now that's going to stay on there, and we make sure that there's no slack around this little post. Later we can even push them again to make sure there's no slack. But I'm going to put my string under the, the retaining hook there on the tailpiece and just lead it all the way down to the second string. Okay, uh, what I have started is sort of the uh, S shape. Notice the snaking string. This is the playing length of string. I'm going to take the end of the string and put it under. And then I'm going to pull it tight around the post so there's no slack. And I'm going to hold it tightly here with my other hand. And then I'm going to kink it back. Quick motion it locks the string around the post and then you can begin to tighten it up you should go maybe around one or two turns and if we can get a close-up of the windings ideally your windings will go spiraling down the post in a tight uh, in a tight uh, nice neat spiral and uh, that looks good and it uh, ensures that your strings will not slip. Okay. Now here, here again, I'm going to use my thumbnail, hold the string, and then bend it very, very tightly right there and then Put it into the tailpiece notch, pull out the slack, and then, then put it on the other end of the neck. Okay, so again, we're going to start turning the string, then we'll take the end that's loose, go under, and kink it back, and tune her up. When you're putting the string into the post, you might as well choose to put it in the rear of the hole. That way you've got half of the windings already started and your S shape is easy to make. Notice I've got the S uh, shape. I didn't have to turn this at all to get it in the right uh, position to, to put your uh, little uh, lock loop in there. Okay, so I pulled my string under the the length of string and I'm kinking it back between the post and the string just like I did on the other strings and there's no difference on the fifth string it's the same 
same type of locking system and then uh, you can position your string in in its uh, in its home either under the peg or on its nut resting point go. It's as easy as that. I usually don't uh, return the string through the, the string post more than once, except on the fifth string peg. Uh, I don't like to have a sharp uh, end of the string poking out that could uh, damage or poke your thumb. So sometimes I'll put this through after it's already on and tuned up. I might put it through the hole again so I yeah I just I just uh, strung the string through one more time on this on this peg. The reason is that I wanted to keep it uh, short, and if I clip it right off now at the at that part, it'll it'll pop back out, but at least the end will be folded over so that it won't uh, poke you. So that's a that's a nice uh, friendly way to put the fifth string on. And our other strings of course we'll just we'll just clip them. They don't have to be you don't have to leave any extra. Our tailpiece has the strings wrapped around the, the knobs and I did a pretty good job of pushing them on but a lot of times they'll they'll work their ways loose and if you use your fingernail or maybe um, some type of a tool and just push the strings in on the bottom of the tailpiece and if there's a little bit of um, slack in the top it helps to push the strings down firmly between the bridge and the tailpiece and that seats the strings in your in your tailpiece and all of the slack pulled out of the string then you can tune up your banjo and have confidence that it will stay uh, relatively well in tune Okay, now we're ready to, to play, and if we have not moved the bridge in the process, uh, our strings should still be in tune. I mean, we should still have the right intonation uh, based on getting our harmonics matched with our fret positions. We'll go into that in, a, in another video as to the best way to position the bridge. Right now, I'm ready to get back to some practicing, and uh, we'll see you later. Have a great day and keep picking.